that's fucking delightful. Fucking delightful, fucking good combination playing. Sliding balls into space. Good, excellent. You have one on the fucking roll. Hello everyone and welcome to the Raw Era Paw podcast in association with Sun and Community Soup Kitchen. You join us live and direct from the Hilton Hotel Bar after Sunderland's fantastic 2-1 win over Wigan Athletic today. I'm joined by Craig. How we doing? I'm knackers. I felt like I kicked every ball there. <laughs> Jobs with us. How we doing? Very good, thank you. I'm Dunbar. Hello, everyone. Good. So, pleased with that, Craig? Yeah. I think this week we've been told that this is a Wigan side who's going to absolutely piss the league and this is the worst Sunderland side we've ever seen and besides the first 10 minutes... We were absolutely outstanding. I thought today, I thought Wigan did not do anything to warrant even being in a discussion to be rival promotion contenders with us. I think Lyndon Gooch absolutely tore them to shreds every chance he went forward. And I think the biggest thing that's pleased me is a lot of people have given the recruitment side a bit of stick. They've given Lee Johnson a bit of stick. But it proves today by releasing Max Power and giving El- Elliot Embleton a go. Because yeah. I tell you what, man, Power, he's had a lot of love and the fans give him all of this Max will miss you sort of shit. But the conduct of him on that pitch today, I thought it was a disgrace. So I'm pleased that he no longer plays for our football club. And Charlie Wyke, again, that's why you don't pay Charlie Wyke 10 grand a week. He's had one fluke season and he's gone back to normal. Do you agree with the crowd, Dunbar? Charlie Wake fucking shite? I think, as we were talking about in the bar earlier on, I think it really shows how good Aidan McGeady was last season. Yeah. Um, like, when, you, when you're pumping McGeady's chances into Charlie Wake, he, he scored the, re- the relevant amount that you would expect a bang average league one striker to score. And it just shows you he didn't have the service today. Uh, he had... What did he get his yellow card for? Did he did he like lash out at uh, Lyndon Gooch? It was that way. Yeah, yeah. It, was an, it was an elbow, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the second half, and I think I showed the level of frustration. But for me, my star player was uh, Luke O'Neill in midfield. Yeah. Thought I thought O'Neill and Evans were meant to do. To be fair, that tackle right at the end. I think it kind of there was a lot of question marks whether he could play in the midfield role. And I think he, he showed a different like he stepped up in levels of commitment I think we all know he's got the, the, the talent and the ability to, to play in that midfield but I think we, we just needed to say that extra bit of commitment and he really showed that today I thought he was fantastic it's good to see us win loads of second balls today that was the main thing for me second balls coming in at upper height for three years in League One we've never done that we've never went up and won duels against like shit players basically I mean it was good to see Corey Evans slot straight in wasn't it he was he was really good um, slotted in well as you said throughout the the whole of last season we we never really won the second balls and then you've got uh, Evans and O'Neill in there it looked like they really wanted it um, I mean didn't give power a sniff um, to be honest I was really impressed um, happy with that Sam's joined us Sam Blakey did you get served quickly enough there? Eh? Uh, just about uh, but not as quick as he is somehow uh, see I, I elbowed people out the way I made, I made sure that I got served first, you see. It is star, but I've got it in a Carlin glass. I didn't <laughs> get make, a discount either. What do you make that today, anyways? I thought, it was, I thought it was spot on, really. I mean, I thought the first 10, 15 minutes were nervy. Um, but I think as soon as as soon as soon we got the penalty, we were the better team. I think we saw the difference in class between the centre-forwards today. I'm not, I'm not just saying that, but... I thought Ross Stewart was incredible. I thought yeah. Go- Gooch was unbelievable. And like I heard earlier, Luke O'Nine just added that bite in midfield that we haven't had. We've always had the likes of Power Ledbetter, who won't go beyond the halfway line. But just I thought we all we all got stuck in together for each other today, and it was it was class like in the end. It was a proper team performance, wasn't it? I mean, it was, I. we were sat we were sat before a sub was made, seeing like who the hell's going to come off? Because yeah. I don't think anybody played badly today. No, not at all. I think. It maybe is one of the weakest squads we've had, and I think, like you said, it would, we all dug in. I, I, I felt like it was me friend playing Dan Neil. I just felt so sorry for him, and every time someone went at him, I wanted him to do well. But you look at that, and I think it was in the first half, or might have been, yeah, it was first half, someone got past Dan Neil, and McGeady came storming in and took him out, really, but yeah. won the ball. And it was just, they all fought for each other, and I saw Lee Johnson, obviously, it's the first time I've seen him. He was jumping around for every ball, and appealing every decision it was just class and I think they, they really got up for the atmosphere once we settled down I think they've got the fans behind them and they looked up for it and that's all we want to see really is picking yeah. How good was Callum Doyle today by the way? I mean that was it can you believe that was his first professional game? 
Well, uh, it's one of them where like, I'm gutted already because we know there's not a Hope and Else chance of ever signing yeah, him permanently, no is there? Chance. But it was, um, it felt very similar to watching like Johnny Evans all those years ago. Like he's just so I said, I said so that, uh, old for that. his years, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, I said that to these around us. The last time I watched a centre half like that was probably Johnny Evans. But 17 year old, be so composed and calm on the ball. And there was a couple of times where people were leaving things on him. He didn't react to it. He just got on with it. And I think he looks a real class act. So. I mean, long may that continue. Obviously, Bailey Wright came on, so there's a suggestion that he does have a future here, contrary to what's been reported. But I, I dare say he's the first centre back on the team sheet from from this point forward. Oh, abs- absolutely, I brilliant. absolutely. I mean, I, I think, and you've got to be fair to him. Tom Flanagan actually played very well today. It was as I mean, they play, the played against Charlie White for three years in training, and they know exactly what he's about. Flanagan gets a lot of stick, and rightly so, a lot of the time. For me today, played fine. Played absolutely fine. There was not one player on the pitch today played poorly. Um, man, the match, Sam? Is the is one you can pick out? Uh, there's a few, but I, th- I think Gooch for me. I thought the fact that he was he was up and down the line all game covering for Winchester, and then the fact he went to right back and he was he was up for every header. He won, I think he won about three or four headers, yeah. and he was in for every tackle. And I think he just he just he epitomised the atmosphere today. And, I thought he, he took his chance and he, he outshone McGeady in, in terms of uh, overall play. I thought he was yeah. our better winger. So. I, I, for me today, probably Ross Stewart gets my man of the match. I think won the penalty and I think people have got to look at that again. How well he played to win that penalty. He could have just shielded the ball and put his back to goal. He ran at the man and won the penalty, put his body in the way, won it. Um, and then scored a great goal. And other than that, I think he put himself about. He just... He did. He did. He did everything. And I, I don't want to just turn this into a like slag and Charlie White podcast. No, I do. Off. Go on. Yeah. Do us. Do us. I'll help you with that. Like, <laughs> but, but for me, Ross Stewart does everything. His brother does, won't be on me. No, team, no, on. no. But it, it, he, he, he done everything that Charlie White doesn't do. He, he runs the channels. He wins headers. He holds it up. His first touch is brilliant. He scored a header. He can score on the floor. He, the, is there anything he can't do, Craig? I just thought it was it was a very sort of mature performance in terms of, I mean, we've mentioned Gooch there and you mentioned Stewart as well. If you look at the players in their team where we're talking about, say, maybe Power and we're talking about Wyke, the amount of times they lost their head when it wasn't going their way. And there was times where say, it wasn't maybe, you know, the rubber the green coming for Stewart, maybe the, the first touch wasn't there in the first half at times, but he didn't let it get him down. He didn't let it bog him down. And the same with Lyndon Gooch as well. So when perhaps, you know, Wigan had a, a small period of ascendancy, we, d- we just kept going. But I think we've seen that performance now from Stewart. We've seen it today. We've seen it against Lincoln. It was great last week against Hull. He's a really good striker. And whether he's going to be a man of front by himself or we get someone to play alongside him, he's going to play a huge part of the season. A lot of people said he might not score 30 goals. He's got one already. Yeah. Why, why not? Yeah. Does that shut the doubt us up then, Job, do you think? Absolutely. That yeah, absolutely. I mean... Um, as you said, there's a lot of negativity going in towards the game, and I think this is going to give people a boost um, as to what what's to come. Um, definitely, definitely a good start. And you know, all the negativity about uh, not having any full backs, which isn't ideal. I mean, we've coped. Um, oh, I mean, Dan, I thought Neil and Winchester were fine. Yeah, you? yeah. I mean, Neil was exposed a bit on the right, but you know, he dealt with it um, early in the game. Uh, yeah. yeah, I definitely he, he dealt with it and. I suppose maybe that's why we're being patient with who we're bringing. Yeah. Um, this transfer window's still open, we've still got time. I think we're waiting, waiting for the for the right guys to come in and hopefully this uh, this young lad from Tottenham can get him over the line. I think it'll be positive and you know we can utilise players elsewhere. Yeah. Well, that's all smiles from here. The Hilton Hotel's full, absolutely ram packed. So we're going to crack on drinking. Thank you all very much for joining us. We're back tomorrow, I think. With another part, the lads are going to go a bit more in depth. Uh, but this will we'll keep nice and short and sweet, so we'll catch you all later. Where we're going, I don't know. Where we're heading, I'm searching for, and always I am on my way.